time. Hello judges, my name is Morgan Eckroth from Onyx Coffee Lab and it's an honor to be here today. Today we're going to be experiencing a journey through time together, not simply looking to our future but also to our past. So let's get started. Now two years ago, hospitality and specialty coffee faced an extinction. Where once coffee functioned as a canvas that fostered relationships and excellence, it changed. Service in coffee became sterile and efficient. And yet two years later, as we stubbornly press forward as an industry, facing what we lost is unavoidable. We're chasing progress while looking over our shoulders at what once was. Today, judges, I want to challenge you that our future can be found in the past through a renewal of coffee, of connection, and of resilience. Now at this time, I'm preparing and then chilling the shots for your later signature beverage. So in the meantime, I invite you to sit back and relax. Additionally, I'd like you to note those menus in front of you. They hold information about our later coffees and courses, and we'll be continuing shortly. So, let's continue. Our journey today begins with a coffee that has experienced an extinction of its own. We have Eugenoides, one of the parents of Arabica. This incredibly unique coffee that helped form our modern expectation for what coffee is was once nearly lost. Forgotten to time before the whole green family at Finca Immaculata resurrected the species in a lab. Deep in the Andes Mountains of Colombia, this coffee has reappeared through painstaking care and effort. The Eugenoides is certainly an ancient species, renewed through technology, and the flavor profile it holds is incredibly unique. It has a low acidity and a complex sugar development that has been enhanced through natural processing. Because of this, I've updosed to approximately 22 grams in. We'll get 36 grams out at approximately 22 seconds. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Eugenoides sweetness has been enhanced through its processing, but today we're going to do so once more, this time with the addition of milk. Today I'm using whole milk. It's been frozen and then distilled down to 30% in order to capitalize on the rich and creamy texture you'll experience in your final beverage. I'll be rejoining you at those tables shortly. Now in this combination, the fats and the milk and the sugars found in the Eugenoides come together to create these unique confectionery notes. In the cup, you will taste creme brulee. You will taste yellow cake batter and melted dark chocolate ice cream. Finally, you'll taste praline. This is caramelized sugar, butter, and nuts. Enjoy. The tactile is an extremely heavy weight. It is thick, buttery, and rich. And it has a coating finish like white chocolate.
My only drinking instructions for you are this. Once you are done, please take a sip of water. This will prepare you for our further coffees and courses. Now, the Eugenoides is certainly a coffee that has already experienced a renewal, and yet today it faces another extinction, this time driven by climate change and resulting in low production. Once more, we look forwards towards an uncertain future in this coffee's history. And yet, judges, on the table in for before you is the rare magic of Eugenoides. Thank you, and enjoy. Now our journey in flavor continues today, this time with a new coffee from Immaculata, the natural processed Sudan Rume varietal. This coffee has been roasted in eight minute batches with a drop temperature of 191 degrees Celsius. This is in order to maintain the tropical acidity found in the Sudan Rume while developing it for the rich tactile of espresso. The Sudan Rume's innovation lies in its processing. After undergoing an anaerobic fermentation, it is placed on slowly rotating drying beds in the courtyard of Immaculata. These drying beds are lovingly called the Drying Swivel Carousel Salon. And their use ensures replicability and consistency in each cup that Immaculata produces. Now, extinction is not something that Eugenoides faces alone. Coffee itself lives in jeopardy and stands in the face of such threats as global climate change and large-scale market shifts. To even begin to offset this, the inherent value of coffee must increase. On this stage, we champion ourselves as representatives of the specialty coffee industry. But the question remains, who is specialty coffee for? Is it for us? individuals who pride ourselves in excellence through extensive preparation and calibration, or is it something more? Please wait to taste, but perform your visual evaluation. In the cup, you will find pink grapefruit. You will taste raw sugar, sweet but unrefined with minerality. You will taste a floral rose, and finally, you will taste kiwi. As I come around and stir your espressos for you, I ask that you turn your attention to the screens in front of you. This is Immaculata. In fact, it is the very drying beds that this coffee once rested on. It is the orange blossom and the citrus trees that grow above it. And it is the immense care and effort that has gone into the cup before you. Now judges, the tactile of your espressos is a medium weight. It is slick and it is silky. The finish recalls the floral rose. And that kiwi note you tasted develops into a key lime for a long finish. Now, as I remove your spoons, I invite you to lift your espressos, take in the aromas of Immaculata, and finally, delight your palate with the flavors of Immaculata. Thank you.
Now, judges, we will continue to face further extinctions as an industry, cracks that seek to splinter and weaken us. It is inevitable, this cycle of loss and renewal. And yet, if there is one thing we can look back to and hold on to, it's human resilience. It's the barista who holds empathy and tenderness in the face of industry-wide chaos, the producer who cultivates precious varietals in the face of global climate change. And it is a deep, stubborn determination that keeps us marching forward. Our final drink today is celebrating our evolution while honoring our future. We have 80 grams of the Sudan Rume Espresso, chilled. And then taking from the rich agriculture that surrounds this coffee, we have 30 grams of Lulo juice. Lulo is a lemon-like citrus native to Colombia. We have 25 grams of simple syrup, made using a one-to-one -one ratio of demerara sugar and water. These two ingredients in combination with the espresso's grapefruit note creates the flavors of tamarind juice and maple. We have 30 grams of salted pineapple juice. The addition of saline creates a balancing effect in the final drink. And this ingredient, in combination with the espresso's sweetness, creates spiced cocoa. Lastly, taking from the past, we have 20 grams of the freeze-distilled milk you experienced in your previous course, creating the textures and the flavors of cream soda. Now, I'm carbonating these ingredients together with a tool called the Perlini, using technology to infuse this beverage with a lush and sparkling final texture. Now, I'll be coming around to all of you shortly. And when I do so, I ask that you please hand me those espresso cups as they've been intentionally left in front of you. Thank you. I will be breaking your cups now representing the struggles that we have faced, we are currently facing, and will continue to face. In times of extinction and upheaval, are we prepared to emerge and expand or constrict? My hope is that it's the former, because if we look to the past, we can see this. Coffee itself has continued through renewal, and so will we. Now, as a reminder, in your final beverage, you will taste tamarind juice. You will taste cream soda. You'll taste maple and spiced cocoa. The tactile is a medium weight, but it can sit lighter on the palate due to the carbonation. It begins slick and juicy. It develops into a creaminess and finally ends with a sparkling and effervescent finish. Now the national liquor in Colombia is something called aguardiente. It is an anise-based spirit that is often used in celebration. In times of the past, it has been shared between onyx and immaculata in partnership. And so because of this, I'm spritzing each of your glasses with orange blossom water and anise tea. This is creating the aromatic experience of celebration in the coffee fields of Immaculata. Please wait to taste. The cups I'm placing in front of you now have been remade using Kintsugi. It is a method of mending something broken with gold to turn it into something even stronger. This is coffee. It's humanity, and if we look closely, we may see the threads of gold woven through our own shared histories. So judges, as we part ways, I leave you with this. Take a deep breath, Look forward to what is broken. And finally, sip from what has been remade. Thank you. Time.